how they were caught. A doctor thought he had committed the perfect crime. I'm Dev with Crime Hive, and I'm doing a new series about how they were caught. And I typically cover true crime stories and documentaries and cases and much more. But today in this episode, I want to talk about this unique case. You're looking at a picture of Rosemary Essa and her husband, Dr. Yazid. And by all accounts, they had a pretty good marriage uh, for looking in from the outside. Um, they seem like they had a, a good, normal life. They have children. Uh, Dr. Yazid's making very good money. Uh, so they're, they're fairly wealthy and, and doing well by all accounts. However, on February 24th, 2005, Rosemary was driving her vehicle en route to a movie. She was going to go to the movie theater and she started to have trouble breathing and she lost consciousness, sem semi-conscious, she was semi-conscious as she was driving and she ended up getting into a small accident. She died shortly after. Now that's, that's what was strange is police come on scene, medical personnel come on scene and they're just baffled because there's no serious injury from this accident, uh, no injury really. There's no significant medical issues with Rosemary, no major illnesses or, or injuries. Uh, they, they don't see any drugs or alcohol in the vehicle. They don't find any drugs or alcohol in her system. So they're, they're really scratching their heads wondering what, what is going on. So they conduct an autopsy. And during the autopsy, nothing was found. Toxicology reports find nothing suspicious. They even tested her a second time and nothing was suspicious. So they, they start doing some, some good old fashioned investigative work and they, they learn about, they learn that, that Rosemary was actually talking to a friend before she, she, was, she was killed. And her friend gave investigators a very small clue, but they said that she had taken her calcium supplements and right after she took those supplements, she started feeling ill. She started feeling like crap, she said. And so police honed in on that small detail. And they learned that Dr. Yazid right here was the person giving those calcium supplements to his wife. They also learned that he was having extramarital affairs. And their relationship was actually pretty rocky. And so they talked to Dr. Yazid and just by 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 some strange reason or by by some strange account the the calcium pills are still at his residence and he willingly gives them over to law enforcement and you know he's he's acting a little suspicious according to family they they're they're kind of thinking he's he's acting a little off but uh police police go to the lab and they're like okay is is there something strange going on with these pills and they're actually concerned that maybe um, it could be one of those cases, if you remember the Tylenol murders, where people were, were poisoned uh, in, in a store uh, or a series of stores. And I can talk about that case another time. But they were concerned that that might be a possibility. Well, they, they start testing these capsules and they're looking at the molecular, you know, they're, they're looking at it molecularly uh, to find out what's in it. They do what's called a, a Prussian test, a Prussian blue test, I believe is what it's called. And they determine that what's inside these capsules is actually cyanide. And so now they want to talk to Dr. Yazid about it, right? But he's one step ahead of law enforcement. And what he does is he flees the country. Okay. So he goes to Beirut, Lebanon, right? He's, he's, um, he's fled the country. Now he looks very guilty, but he doesn't really hide the fact that he's guilty. He does some really odd things while he's overseas. First off, because he's in Beirut, there's no extradition treaty with the US, meaning we cannot arrest him and take him back to the United States. So he's, in the meantime, he's safe there. But what he doesn't know is FBI and local informants are actually watching him and they're surveilling him and they're just waiting for him to make a mistake. So. So he flees and, and he's, he's partying it up. You know, he's got, he's got money. 
Uh, he's, he's, he's got quite an ego, and he's even bragging to locals that he killed his wife. Uh, what's crazy is he actually creates an email address, and he calls his email fugitive at hotmail.com. So he's looking quite guilty at this point. He's not hiding it. And months go by, several months go by. Police finally learn that he is going to be traveling to Cyprus. And that happens to be an area where if FBI were to uh, arrest him, they could take him back to the United States. And so they are all on this. And they they know that he's going to, to fly in. So what they do is... They, they go to the airport and they find that he has changed his appearance. He's got a fake passport, but they still intercept him anyway. And they, they conduct fingerprints, uh, fingerprint test, and those fingerprints end up being Dr. Yazid. So they've arrested him and they take him back to the United States. And we learned some pretty, pretty crazy things about this case and, and what actually happened. Uh, we do learn that he did in fact try to poison his wife with cyanide and he had concocted a a plan to the the, the plan was he was going to give his wife the the cyanide while she was driving and he was banking on the fact that she was going to be going into heavy traffic going at a high rate of speed uh, she, the, the effects would take place with the cyanide laced calcium pills and she would get into an accident and die and everyone would think that that accident was an accident and they would never suspect the cyanide so that was his plan and his own brother apparently in court actually testified against him because he admitted to him that he did in fact kill his wife so he was convicted uh, you can see another picture here life in prison uh, no chance of parole for 20 years uh, it looks like uh, on, on, on this account here and that was how he was caught he um, thought he was better than you know better than everyone smarter than everyone and ultimately uh, again with all the planning and everything that he did it, it just I, it just blew me away that he left the pills at his at his residence um, I guess he just thought uh, he, he was he was too smart nobody would ever figure this out uh, but investigators did and he's locked up. That was how he was caught.